What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. The model this week is a corpse cart and it comes courtesy of Andy from Synerds TV. He hit me up a few weeks ago and said that he had gotten two of these from a friend who found them in a trash can behind a tattoo shop. So pretty much we're each going to paint one of these corpse carts and kind of compare at the end. I haven't seen any of his and he hasn't seen any of mine. So at the end of this video, I'm going to throw up the link for his YouTube channel and I will have links in the description below for that and his Instagram page. I started by stripping this model in an ultrasonic cleaner, reassembling some of the broken parts, filling them in with Milliput, priming it black and then spraying over the top with white ink. I'm going to start by using Scale 75's Ink Tense Wood, which is a really nice brown ink. And I'm just going to cover all of the wood, doing multiple passes in any of the places that I want to be a little bit darker. My main goal for this corpse cart is to go pretty grim dark with the whole thing. So I really want it to be intense in color. A lot of saturation, a lot of darkness, but you know, variations within that. And I want it to be disgustingly dirty. Adding a few drops of black ink into that brown, I'm just going to try and create a nice gradient from the really light points of those wooden spikes down towards the base. Starting fresh with dark green in the pot, I'm just going to give a little bit more variation to the wood and make it look like it's been kind of rotting a little bit. I'm also going to put a little bit of this on the what's going to eventually be the copper bell. I want to add a little bit of green to kind of pre-patina that copper. The only bummer about this model is that there's all this really nice wood grain, but it's going to get covered up by a whole bunch of corpses. It was at this point that I realized that both of the sconces on top of this thing were missing. So I went through some bits. I found one that I thought would fit but the other side is actually broken off even further. So there wasn't any good place to put that. So one will have to do. Coming in with Vallejo's dead flesh, I'm gonna do an all over coat on all of the corpses. With dwarf skin, I'm going to start to create some variation in that skin tone by making some of it look like it's a little fresher than the other stuff. And we're going to start to introduce more colors in to kind of create that same effect. Instead of starting fresh with dark green and doing the same kind of thing, I just added it to that dwarf skin. It changed it a little bit. That ink is really intense anyways, so it mostly takes over pigment wise, but it gives a nice really dead flesh look. Going one step further and adding some crimson into the pot, this is going to mix with that dark green which has quite a bit of blue in it and it's going to make a nice kind of muted purple. Thank you. 
So far, everything's been pretty bright and not really grim dark. So we're going to bring in this AK Interactive's Streaking Grime, and I'm going to lay this over the bodies really heavily. And this is going to do a few pretty fun things. The first thing we're going to do is use our odorless mineral spirits, and this is going to reactivate that streaking grime, and we're just going to be able to pull it off of the surface. So that's going to reveal a lot of that color variation that we had underneath, and it's going to leave a lot of really nasty grime in all of the recesses. Now you might be wondering, why not just use Agrax Earthshade? This is going to do pretty much the same thing, and you don't have to clean it up. Well, the main reason is that we're really priming the surface with oils so that we can use a 50-50 mix of Blood Angels Red and Black Templar. And what this is going to do is allow this paint to slide freely on this oily surface, and it's going to give us some really interesting kind of bloody patterns all over these models. The more we work this paint in and start to break through those oils, the paint is going to start to adhere a lot more. So I'm trying to work it in to places that I want it to be a little bit bloodier, but for the most part, it's sliding around nicely and just leaving random, kind of cool pooled blood stains. Once all of this is dry, which does take a little bit because there are oils and contrast paints, I'm going to come in with Dwarf Skin and Dead Flesh in pretty much a 50-50 mix. And I'm just going to start to layer up a lot of the skin tones. Anywhere where that Dwarf Skin is more prominent, I'm just going to continue to layer and brighten up a lot of those high points. And anywhere where that kind of greenish dead flesh is showing, I'm just going to use that pure dead flesh. I started off base coating a lot of the clothing and leather around these corpses with Wornfang Brown. And it worked out all right, but I think it was too close in color to all of the wood. So I come back later with some other paint to just darken that down. I decided to use Vallejo's White to paint the few little rats that are crawling around in these corpses. Coming in with Scale 75's Arbuckles Brown, which is really more of a dark purple. I'm going to take care of some of the shadowing and try and add a little bit more contrast into these corpses. I did water this paint down quite a bit into a glaze, so it's really light and just kind of tinting that skin. At full opacity, this is much darker and it does look more like leather. Again, to create more contrast, no pun intended, I'm going to use Black Templar and go over all the cloth on the corpses. That's going to leave a little bit of that brown showing through in the highlights, but it's going to darken everything down pretty nicely. For the big copper bell on top of the corpse cart, I'm going to use Vallejo Metal Colors Copper. Copper. 
adding some dark green into that copper, it's going to change that color just a little bit and still maintain that shiny metallic look. But we're going to start to weather and patina this copper bell. And immediately to avoid this copper from drying, I'm going to go back for some fresh copper and I'm just going to try and blend that in with the rest of the bell. I'm going to add just a little bit of nilic oxide and kind of blend it in in the same way that I did that other green. And that's just going to give us a little bit of a dusty finish to it, that nilic oxide look. Coming back in with that Arbuckles Brown, I'm going to base coat all of the cloth on the zombies that are dragging this cart. It's worth noting at this stage that I painted the cart pulling zombies pretty much the same way as the ones that are in the cart. The only difference is that I mainly use dead flesh to highlight and just a little bit of that dwarf skin on the most raised edges. A base coat of Rakar flesh for any of the bones that are sticking through some of these zombies. Vallejo metal color steel to do the rest of the metallics on the model. If you don't have access to this metallic color, Lead Belcher is a pretty good substitute. I'm using a little bit of Scale 75's Intense Wood to kind of darken down some of the shadowy areas on this bell. There's also some damage that I'm trying to kind of fill in, and that's just going to give a little bit more color variation to that copper, and it makes it look pretty cool. Pretty much, the last thing to finish up on this model is the driver. And I went a little bit back and forth on this. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do this. So the first thing I did was kind of paint half of it brown. And then I came in with some red on top because I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have this bloody red cape. But it just didn't really work very well. I covered it with some AK Interactive Streaking Grime clean some of that away and it's just still didn't really give that grim dark look that I was looking for. So instead I decided to repaint it white and come in with some Vallejo's ochre brown. Now I did pretty much the same thing I did before where I kept that bottom half that you know brown color in this case the ochre and then I covered the entire thing in streaking grime. Doing it this way definitely gave a more grimy look to this driver and knowing that we can come back and take some of this off definitely gives us a little bit more room to play with some color variation between the white and that ochre brown. Using mineral spirits, I'm going to start to remove some of that streaking grime and I'm really going to focus this on you know, a lot of the highlight points. So those upper folds and the top of his head, that kind of thing. I'm also going to start revealing just a little bit of that ochre brown, and that's just gonna give us a little bit more color variation. Using Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint, I'm going to show you a pretty easy way to get nice consistent blood spatter on your models. So you load your brush up with 
this red paint, I suppose it could be any paint really, and you spray through that brush and it just pushes that paint and splatters onto wherever you're aiming. If you get closer, you can get tighter spray patterns and further away, wider spray patterns. So it's pretty useful if you don't want to load your airbrush up and turn the pressure down to just spatter kind of randomly. So I just want to give a huge thank you to Andy at Synerds TV for sending in this model and doing this collaboration with me. This is a super fun model to paint and I really wanted to try and get in on that grim dark look and hopefully I accomplished that. You'll have to let me know in the comments. Definitely do not forget to go check out the Synerds TV YouTube channel. He's got some awesome tutorials posted already including the other half of this collaboration, which is another corpse cart, and an awesome tutorial on how to paint rusty weapons that I actually used for this video, which is why you didn't see me paint them. So all the links will be in the description and at the end of this video. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I've been Casey, and I will see you in the next video.